My guy. My guy, man. I feel like it's been a minute, man. I really want to hear about you, bro. Like, you you got the, you're like, you're the, you are the next Khaled, I think, better, though. Okay. You know I'll women. take that. But, like, what's, yeah, what's, what's going on with you? Nah, the Khaled story is interesting because <laughs> when I was in Tokyo, I got to tell this story. I'm going to run the clip, too. But when I was in, when I was in Tokyo in, like, 2017, 2018, I don't know when that was, there was a, a girl inside the club that I was at in Rapunji Hills. Shout outs to D Black. He's he's free now, you know what I'm saying? He got us in VIP, everything like oh, that. Wow. So we we outside <laughs> with the um, the Yakuza. So the Yakuza is like their version of like the mob. You know, so we we in VIP with something crazy. It's like it's the club here, but we on the next level up. So of course, you know, we black Americans in Tokyo, so the girl is just like <laughs> Oh, celebrity, celebrity. You know, she can't, she don't know English. So she's like, celebrity? I'm like, yeah, I'm a celebrity. What's up? So we're doing a let out. She follows me outside. And when we get outside, she's asking all my friends. She's like, DJ Khaled? DJ Khaled? And I'm just like, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm DJ Khaled. Another one. Another one. Uh, DJ Khaled? Another one. <laughs> Needless to say, me and her got acquainted, you know what I'm saying? So that was, I just had to tell that tangent. But. This is another episode of Execution Season with Story King Brent and Robert E. Woods. You know, I, I got the um, a photo shoot tomorrow, finally oh. putting out the uh, Wall Street dropped out merch that I've had. I've had this design since February. Wow. Uh, we putting it together. I'm doing a whole uh, production. I, it's, it's really going to be embodying the yay era from college dropout, which is something that really shaped me as a young man being from Chicago. So uh, my my version of the dropout beer is going to be the Wall Street Bull, you know, and I'm going to incorporate the Chicago Bull since I'm from Chicago. Right, so um, just the way just the way Ye had the dropout beer mascot, I ordered the mascot material, so I'm gonna have a bull mascot, and I'll make the whole production, and we're gonna have a photo shoot tomorrow, and let this video hold me accountable. I'm gonna put it up for pre-sale on Black Friday. So, gotta work fast, bro. <laughs> I'll work, you know? That is fire, yeah, that is no fire, doubt. bro. We, we gonna put an order in too. Okay, cool. I just didn't want to interrupt. Oh, yeah, nah, nah, thank nah, you. This is, there you go. <laughs> That's why we edit. Oh, can I do can I do this? But just can I just add a fruit. Uh, just fruit. Like okay. just the fresh fruit. Just no, no yogurt. Nothing. No yeah, right. none of that. Just All just right. the fresh fruit. What about you, bro? Uh, same, same for me. Same thing. All right. Oh, you just want the fruit? Yeah. You probably want the yogurt though. Um, I'm just getting the fruit. Actually, yeah, the granola with the yogurt, but no, um, I just don't want the coconut yogurt. Okay. Are you a military veteran that is looking for the blueprint to becoming a millionaire within the next two to five years? Look no further. Join us in the Millionaire Veteran Blueprint Mastermind where we break down the blueprint to show you exactly how to make that dream become a reality. Not only will I show you exactly what I'm doing in order to create generational wealth, but I'll give you my lenders and administrative support that can help you get the money you need for your real estate investments. Just click the link in my bio to get on that list to be on the next mastermind. I'll see you there. Let's go. If you're searching for a DJ for your next special event, or if you want you and your team to travel like global executives, go ahead and text Brent directly at 708-578-7571. That's 708-578-7571. I no longer even believe it's in insane. coincidences because when you're aligned on the right path, it's no such thing as a coincidence because everything <laughs> on earth is working in your favor to get you what you want because you've right. stated, you've declared what you want. So right. everything is working in its power to, to get it to you. Now, whether you take advantage of the opportunities that are given to you is another story. But if you say you want something and you truly believe it and you truly do desire it, I think God is going to put a way to make it happen for you, you know? Now the power is in your hands. You know? Right. So if you truly believe it, yeah, I think that's... It's, it's basically saying, okay, you say you want it, here it is, how, how bad do you really want it? Right. You know? Right. I was, I was in a factory, and the reason that... This is what uh, solidified it for me. This just happened this past weekend. So I was DJing at the factory. I have a friend who comes in. He's a, he's a lawyer. We chop it up all the time. Uh -huh. And he was just, he casually asked me because his, his father is from London. He was like, you ever play any London grime in here? 
And I was like, not really, but there was this guy in the summertime. Mind you, it's November right now. I was like, there was this guy in the summertime. He was from London. His girlfriend lives out here. And every time he would come in, I would play some gigs or I would play some, you know, some London just, just, to, Skepta, just to get him hyped, yeah. some Skepta, because, you know, it was lit. But I'm like, yeah, he, does, he doesn't come here. He's back in uh, London. You know, he doesn't live over here or whatnot. But that's kind of the only time I played run. I can't make this up, bro. 30 minutes later, he walks in. He doesn't live in America, bro. His girlfriend does. He's like, oh, oh yeah, I'm back God. in town. He's like, y'all have some sort of holiday during this time. So my girlfriend said, come. I said, bro, I was just talking to you. I was just talking about you 30 <laughs> minutes ago. And that, and it, sound, it was so unreal that it seemed like I was in a Truman show or something. Dang. It's like somebody was almost playing a prank on me. But I was like, you know what? That's how much power my words have. Right. That's how much power yes. my thoughts have. Right. Is that I, you know, I'm just a line, bro. I'm just a line. I was on a webinar last night. Mind you, there's no face. There's no nothing. It's just you typing in the chat if you agree with the person. The moderator used my name as an example for a person who flies first class. They was like, yeah, so we're all on the plane, right? And everybody's in the economy, but Brent and such and such is in first class. I'm like, of course, of course I am. Yes, I'm in first class. That's right. He doesn't know me from a name in a hat, but that's just the, the energy and the ambiance that's permeating through every aspect of myself. And I, I'm, I'm starting to just accept that. Right. Yeah, that's that's right. I am the person that's a first class. Y'all listen to this example. You know? Right. <laughs> And even if it's not true now, it's me preparing myself for it to be true. Exactly. Or it's me working towards um, having the steps to make that become true and make that become reality. That's what we're on, bro. That's we're on the right path, man. We're on. So it's sponsored by Immaculate Travel Worldwide. Y'all probably think, man, Story King Brent is always on a flight somewhere. He's always traveling. How does he get to do that? What in the world is he doing? Does he have a plug? What's going on? I'm answering all of those questions. Just DM me at Story King Brent or DM at Immaculate Travel dot WW. And I'm going to give you the I'm going to give you the codes. I'm going to give you the keys to the matrix, man. I'm sharing all of my resources with you. So if you want to find out about how to travel like Story King Brent and make moves and bust moves here and there, just DM me and we're going to get into it. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, are you fruit? You know? <laughs> and um. Probably the most exciting thing, I appreciate it, Thanks. going into 2023 is the relationship I've established with my accountant. So I have an accountant now. Man. Yes, sir. And my accountant is making sure that everything uh, via uh, my LLC and the way I'm going to prepare my taxes is, is going very crisp, man. He's really thorough. And I actually met him in a barbershop. And meeting my accountant in a barbershop because I love to get my hair cut every couple days. Uh, <laughs> he actually had on a Neo Davis hoodie. He had on the, um, the the rapper, athlete, entrepreneur. You know that you know that sweatshirt where it's crossed out. Yeah. And oh, he, Neo, yes. Yeah, yeah. Neo Davis. Yeah. So he had on that hoodie in the barbershop. Mind you, I live in a Dominican neighborhood. There's not so many black people. I'm not even really sure he's like fully black. I don't know. But that's that's besides the point. He had the hoodie on. The fact that he had that hoodie on, I wanted to have a conversation with him. It's that inter interaction that proved to me how powerful merch can be. Merch is a community builder because I knew that if he had the dedication to purchase a Neo Davis hoodie, that means he's consumed so much of the content and he embodies what everything that Neo stands for. So he purchased that hoodie as a testament that like, look, I. I embody these principles, it's something I agree with as well. And the fact that I had that thought process about him, that's somebody I want to talk to. If, if you have a Neo Davis hoodie on and you co-sign everything he's about, I want to get to know you. I, I didn't know this guy from a can of paint, but I was just like, look, you know, what's your name? What you into? Yeah. And we took that 20 minute comp, so we talked for 20 minutes right. off the strength of a hoodie. This is the power of merch. This is the power of building community. Okay. And we had a, I was like, look, we should talk more um, in depth. We ended up meeting at a coffee shop, talked for about two hours. I didn't plan on you know, him becoming my accountant or anything of that nature, but through our conversations, we arrived at um, mutual points where we thought we could be assets to each other. And the reason I'm telling this whole story is that that's the power of building a community. And a community can start as small as one person, it can start as small as a hoodie. You know, This is what brings people together. So 
when I when I get these hoodies and merchandise off the ground, it's yes, it's about you know branding myself, but it's also about aligning people who uh, directly co-sign what I stand for. Because that's what that's what you do when you put on a brand and you wear a brand on your chest. You actually rock with what they stand for so much so that you're willing to be a walking billboard for them. Like I got on a Factory 380 t-shirt. This is where I DJ at every weekend. Um, and I have, like this is my spot, so I, I feel comfortable wearing the spot. You know, right. he felt comfortable with Neo's principles, so he felt comfortable wearing the hoodie. When people wear my hoodie, I want them to feel comfortable about everything I stand for. It just, it really opened my mind up to something as small as a, as a brand on a, on a t-shirt or a hoodie. I was like, you know, that does have power. I used to knock it, I used to brush it off because everybody was asking me for that type of stuff already, but I thought it was kind of cheesy. Yeah, man, I don't have any, any merch or anything. I'm not that vain. I, I always say that, it's just like, yeah, I don't was, need a, a shirt with a story king run on it, but you know, it's more than that. It's, uh, it's about the environment. So I thought that was important. That is, that's very dope, man. Um, you know, it's interesting. Everybody has their own execution plan too, mm -hmm. and I like the fact that when you talk about launching something, you usually mention um, it as a launch. You mention it as a launch, not like you're just putting something out. Right, you just right, say, right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have a launch party, or I'm dropping it on this date. Mm -hmm. So there's usually a specific plan to that. Because some some people are like, I'm gonna write a book and put it on Amazon. And that's their only plan to really just write a book, and that that's fine too. But um, could you talk about like how you develop the mindset for your launch plans? Cause I'm I'm hype about this <laughs> these hoodies already. So like, yeah. yeah. So I attribute a lot of that to um, changing the content that I listen to and watch on a daily basis. So you know I'm all about social proof podcasts. More so, um, I do a little bit of, of Earn Your Leisure, but really, yeah. David David's channel is what I really take in the most. Um, aside from other things that kind of come up on my my YouTube suggested page, Myron Golden is another person that I listen to. But there's a specific cat um, that specializes in launch, and I can't remember his name. I'm going to put it on the screen, though. He always has the red glasses, and he focuses on launches uh, specifically. He's the person that kind of shed light on something that I was already doing, like you said, but warming people up to accept what you have to offer is much better than just shoving it in their face. You know, you, you always want to warm people up and that's in all aspects of life. If you if you just meet somebody, you shouldn't just ask for something on top. You want to establish genuine relationships uh, with the person, um, male or, or opposite sex, you know, even sex you know you don't just dive in you know what I'm saying? you gotta warm it up you gotta do a little you know uh, full play before you climax you know what i'm saying so <laughs> it's, it's all the same concept man you got to prepare people for what you want to give them because believe it or not everybody's not living in your world you know it might make sense right. to you to just throw something at the table and everybody accept it but everybody is not thinking about you 24 7 you just uh, throw something out like, what's this I don't I don't even know what this is so but if it's always in somebody's face that gives them more of a reason to drill it in their head it's always I run into it like I'll post a flyer uh, I'm DJing somewhere and somebody will text me and be like yeah you still DJing at the place what time does it start what's the address it's the I'm flyer. like you you know I'm DJing there so you saw that from a flyer <laughs> So, you, so go to the flyer for the info. <laughs> like that's common sense, right? Yeah, yeah. But you have to remember they don't have as much invested in it as you. So they're not using brain power to think like, oh, I could just go look at the flyer. It's like, oh, I'm talking to you right now. Let me just waste your time, you know? <laughs> but yeah, man, it's just knowing that you, you're not the center of attention. You are the main character in your movie, right. but you're not the main character in everybody else's movie, man. They got their own love. So. That's interesting, and I think that that's how <laughs> we um, start to find the people in our tribe or that are supposed to be magnetized toward us because we have similar interests. And so, when it comes to storytelling, too, like, has that always been a one of, like a strength? Tell the story. You know, I've always found it to be important to make sure that the entire narrative of something is told. 
I've loved to read ever since I was a child. Right. You know, I got the award for most accelerated reader points <laughs> in in grade school, where I was student council president, by the way. You know, but um, yeah, I've always loved to read, and I just think um, taking in the entirety of a story and realizing all of the parts of the story, from the intro to the build up to the climax to the you come down and then the resolution. At the end, is uh, you have to make sure everybody has the entire picture of what's going on, um, so they don't make their own assumptions. Cause yeah. I don't, I don't like, I don't like for people to make assumptions about me. Yeah. It's usually wrong, because uh, I'm complex in different ways. But yeah, I want to just make sure I control my own narrative. I've always thought that was important. Just being from Howard, we know that firsthand. I mean, the, the people I knew as a freshman. We're all doing such incredible things now. Uh, I just had one of my boys from freshman year was on Shark Tank. Right. Oh. Two days ago, on Shark Tank, pitching to the Sharks, and he got a deal. Right. So you know him and his brother. Shout outs to Johnny Bravo and Trey. Uh, their product, Ride Fresh, which I featured in a few of my vlogs. Bravo hit me with the uh, with the Ride Fresh joint. Let me pull it out. He was like, he knew I was coming through, so he had the Chicago joint just for me. Shout out to him for that made it all the way to Shark Tank and they've been trying to get on there for the past four years and they finally got through. And just the statistics of getting on Shark Tank, I think it's harder to get on there than it is to get into Harvard, even though we don't really care about Harvard, we care about Howard <laughs> University, the real HU, Black Mecca, uh, the zenith of education in America, just want to make that clear. But um, yeah, they were on Shark Tank and they did a, a brilliant job of getting their product across, knowing their information, knowing their numbers. And the thing that was most impressive to me mm -hmm. is that they were not on there shucking and jiving, bro. They were using Ebonics, you know, African-American vernacular. They were lax, you know, Donnie had his braids. You know, everything was good. It's just like, wow, these two guys are unapologetically at the top of their craft, presenting to on, on a top entrepreneurship uh, platform in the country, in the world, really, because right. everybody watches them, and they secured a deal, man. And they were really comfortable up there. They were making jokes about Mark. Mark Cuban got real offended and said he's not in there, but they didn't let that <laughs> rattle him. They kept going to the end. One of the sharks uh, who was most interested in, uh, I think her name is either Barbara or Caroline, I'm, I'm not sure, but she made a, she made a counter offer. Donnie made another counter offer against that, which he ended up taking. I'm just like, wow, this is how, this is what Hope was talking about. This is how you move in a room full of vultures, right? right? You know, so they, I, I was just super proud of them. And that just goes to your point. When I, when me and Donnie were first cool at Howard, you know, I was a music producer. He was a rapper, you know? You just got two kids, one from the Detroit, one from Detroit, one from Chicago, Midwest. Shout out to the Midwest. Um, who would have known? years later that this guy would be on Shark Tank. You know, come on, man. You never know who anybody's gonna be. Right. So salute to him. Salute. Because they've been on the entrepreneurial grind in general for yeah. a long time. For a long time. I think at least a decade or yeah. had more yep. than Because before, before they did Rob Fresh, he had yeah. those Wii emojis. Yes. And that was before iPhone had the black emojis. Yes. They had the, uh, they had the black emojis. So, yeah, shout out to them. Yeah, man. And that's just that's just tip of the iceberg. I could I could tell a story like that 30, 40 more times. You yes. know, it's just so many amazing people that we're blessed to know in our network. Right. And you never know. You never know who's gonna be who. Right. And I think that's the importance of just <clears throat> moving forward in your story, your journey. Because you can't just focus on what somebody else's story is looking like. Damn, they just they right, just, right. <laughs> they're winning right now. It's like, nah, like, that means that it's, that your turn is next. Like, there are other pages to flip <laughs> in this entire 100%. thing. 100%. Like, seeing them on Shark Tank solidify for me. Not that I still cold switch because, you know, thankfully I've been out of the Wall Street thing for a couple of years now, but I'll never cold switch again. You got to was was just on Shark Tank getting million dollar valuations. Doing them, talking about they got the flyest product in the world. Like, the flyest? You're talking to people worth hundreds of millions and billions of dollars and you're using this type of terminology? I'm comfortable everywhere, bro. I'm comfortable, you know? That's so, real. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. I just did a, uh, I DJed a gala for 800 people at Chelsea Pier yes. earlier last week. And when I was getting dressed and stuff, I'm like, man, should I still have all my, my rings and my shades and everything? And I'm just like, yeah, that's they book story king print. That's what we get, you know. So of course right. they know what they yeah. get. Yeah, exactly. And I rocked it, and they're gonna bring me back next year. And it was a, it was a good time. But yeah, never 
never shrinking in a room. And right. I got that from um, Terrence Lowe, who owns Michael Lavelle Wines. He uh, he did a he did a talk with Vista Print, and um, he dropped that gem. And I was like, you know what? That was that was incredible. You want to be in rooms, you know, that don't encourage you to shrink. They encourage you to grow. And we right. should never shrink to the occasion because, you know, we're the type of people that can impact the room when you walk in. So we should right. never shy away from that for anybody else's comfort. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. Like there was a period of my life where I had I was accused of being arrogant, mm. right? And I thought that that was such a an offense. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, and I was just like, damn, maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe I shouldn't be like cocky, arrogant, too confident. And it, it really shifted my perspective of myself. But recently, though, I've been like, f that, you know. Yeah. Um, in terms of shrinking yourself to make someone else feel comfortable right. just because you just because they might I don't know it's, it just doesn't make sense you know I think a lot of the times that's just somebody else is projecting their insecurity on you because yeah. you're you're confident in your abilities and what you bring to the table now it's a difference if you being a jerk like exactly. oh yeah I'm, I do this that and the third but this is if you're just stating facts like Ye said, I state the facts to stunt. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's, that's really it, you know? I state um, the facts to stunt. Yeah, bro. And we rocking with Ye forever. So, you know, we're just going to leave it there. 100%. But yeah, man. Nah, yeah. So, just as recent as 48 hours ago, my mentee, I've talked about him before. Shout out oh, yeah. to Malik. Uh, he came to me for an idea to, you know, um, do third-party distribution on Amazon, basically running an Amazon store. And I said, I, I love it. Just put the play together, I'll finance it. The man said to play to me the next night. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> All right, cool. So even as of right before filming this, he sent me an invoice to be fulfilled. And we're gonna move forward with that. I'm gonna, come with, I'm gonna cut him a nice deal because I want him to run with it. I don't really want to touch it, but um, you know, as long as I get my money back and I get a, a percentage, I'm going to let him go ahead and cake off of it and just use it as, as passive income. But I'm really looking forward to what he has planned, you know, for this Amazon store because he's really smart, really bright. Um, you know, he's going into investment banking. And uh, I have full confidence in his abilities uh, to go ahead and run the store. So looking forward to that. That's dope. More money in the bank, man. Right. You're trying to execute, you know? Passive work. Passive execution right there. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, bro. Congratulations on that, by the way. Absolutely. I think that's uh that's the gist of what's going on with me right now. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's, that's a lot. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. I mean, it's a lot, but it's not enough, bro, because we're not yeah. making 20k a week yet. <laughs> so it's a lot more, it's a lot more to do, man. You mean at or the uh, the Amazon store? No, just oh, in life. In, in life, you yeah, know, yeah, you want a million dollars. A million dollars is twenty k a week, three thousand a day. Yeah, you're not making right. three thousand dollars a day. You need to do better tomorrow. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? And it's really that simple. You know, people say, "I want to be a millionaire. I want a million dollars." Like that's what it takes. That, that's it right there. You say you want it. What have you done today that's to real. get closer to it? What, what do you feel like is that the, simple? The key is for you right now. Um, if I put it, if I well, I have several different plays going on right now, right? But they're more so by chance. It's not systemic. It's not uh, streamlined with everything. So if all of those hit streamlined, then yeah, we can start seeing 3,000 a day. We can start seeing 20K a week, and we can be a million liquid, you know? And that's just the beginning. You know, I'm trying to be 30 M's, 40 M's, <laughs> right. you know? Right. 100. Right. <laughs> you know, but like the minimum. But, you know, stuff like that, gotta, the ball got to get rolling. Right, yeah. straight execution. And, and and like Myron says, you know, wealth plus speed. There's not enough urgency yeah. that we want. I mean, we we're blessed to be able to be comfortable, you know. And right. your comfort zone is detrimental. It's a problem. It's, it's it's detrimental because why go for 20k a week when you you getting your nice check, you pay your rent, you go to you can go to brunch, you know, you, go, <laughs> you can you can get fresh, uh, you take a trip. What's the point? Right. You know, what's the point of going harder? I don't have to go. I go hard tomorrow. That's that's the problem. So it's like us living as if tomorrow is promised. It's not really, you know. Right. And especially you know when you want to secure your legacy and you want to improve the lives of yourself and then the ones you love. 
it should be it should be nothing we think of more than just trying to accumulate as much money as possible. Not for money's right. sake, right. for helping people's sake. You know? Right. So many people can benefit off of the power of your mind, the power of my mind. Um, we're doing a world of disservice each day that we don't reach our full potential. Very selfish. Very selfish. So when you look at it from that perspective, like I'm being selfish because I'm not at my full capacity. And since I'm not at my full capacity, there's a whole ripple effect that's mm -hmm. that's not happening based off of that. Right. Got to get more urgent about getting to this point. Do you feel like there's a thin line between the guilt of not going hard and realizing, OK, maybe I should I don't know, preserve my body today? I don't know. Like I said, it, I don't know if it's guilt. I think it's selfishness. Selfishness. Selfish, bro. You selfish because you got you got the capacity and the opportunity and the knowledge. Yeah. To make millions of dollars, impact millions of people, and you just not doing it. Yeah. That's selfish. Nah, it's facts though. It's facts because not everybody, everybody's not blessed with critical thinking and creativity. Yeah. That's not like a characteristic that everybody has. So right. you know, if you are blessed with that and you do have the capacity to do that and you just choosing not to, it's messed up, man. It's low key disrespectful to God too. If you're religious. You yeah. Know, gave you these gifts and you just sitting on them. That's, that's real. All this information, the knowledge. Sucks. I'm guilty. I'm talking yeah, to myself. Yeah. I think I go harder some days than others for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I would say Tuesday to Thursday are like my hardest. That's what's up. I'm like, okay, I'm really on point today. Yeah, at least you know. Um, Saturday mornings, I'm going in. And then Sunday morning is like, okay, it's okay. To, it's okay. But, but I'm also, my girl's like, I want to watch Power. <laughs> but I'm like, but that's important. I though. really need to get to this. Thing, but know? like you know, so we can't go yeah. hard at night like a hundred percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. Part of you is going hard is making sure yo your marriage is secure. That's yeah. a part of you going hard. You know what I'm saying? Like that's <laughs> actual work you got to put in. So right, y'all watching right. power together is bonding. You know that's making sure that y'all relationship stays strong. That's just as important as getting to the money. You know because that's that's your legacy. You know yeah. the y'all bond is what's gonna last forever. So. That's a priority too. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't have a marriage or anything, but you know, I get my cake on, you know, yeah. <laughs> when, when I need to, and when I don't, whatever. But yeah, it's, it's juggling all of those aspects. That's At crazy. At the same though. time, right? Yeah, man. Life is complex. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not easy. And I, I found myself appreciating even problems. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, damn, thank God that I could even just solve that problem with. Uh, with money now like I didn't expect that but cool you know wow. it's fine um, I think that's but now I'm just like just being grateful for every every single thing you know what I mean Word. Um, um, there was a guy by the name of Aubrey Drake Graham <laughs> who just said on her loss they said more money more problems bring on the problems you right. know what I'm saying bring on the problems man. because you know more money you got more problems you have but the more you can solve them bro. so Exactly. It's the mindset, man. Everything boils down to the mindset. Even this fruit, bro. Everything is 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 in our mind, bro. So you're still on the fruit journey because that's it's keeping you. You feel great, right? Bro, I'm. I think this is day 168. It's not even about yeah. feeling great at this point. This is just my life. It's yeah. a lifestyle change, bro. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I feel amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, people notice a difference. And they can't quite put their finger on it. <laughs> so I get accused of having a nose job. <laughs> uh, which was hilarious, man. I guess so. <laughs> so I'll go into further detail on this. Um, on Tell the Story Radio, which is coming soon. I should have, I should have my first episode before our next episode. Sick. Uh, but basically, you know, obviously uh, the impacts of eating fruits and veggies, you know, I've changed dramatically and will continue to do so. But the biggest, the biggest change has been, you know, in my mental, you know, just realizing how everything that we think we need, we don't. You really only need 
the bare minimum to survive and a lot of the a lot of the obstacles we create are specifically within our head and once you make a decision to live a certain way or to do a certain thing it's very simple to follow it so people might say man you just eating fruits and, and veggies raw you know you don't never just want a burger or nothing like that and it's just not to say that those foods aren't good or anything like that but i've just decided that that's what i'm not doing so myron golden he he said a, a good uh example he was just saying you know uh do you do heroin <laughs> it's just like obviously you don't do heroin right <laughs> so if you were in a room with five other people and they were all doing heroin would you do it <laughs> no because you don't do heroin right, right? Right, right so if i'm at a table i was just at peter luger's one of my favorite steakhouses you know i got the salad with a side of tomatoes and pickles you know they got the steak for two and everything like that am i tempted no because i'm not eating steak right now so it's not really that it's just once you make up in your mind what you're doing life is easy the problem is a lot of us don't have the audacity to go after or full-heartedly dive into whatever it is that we want whatever that may be and we are on the fence when your shades are gray instead of black and white that's when the confusion that's when the temptation steps in you know if you're not um fully locked in i'm fully locked in right so it ain't no temptation right i'm cool with just give me my blueberries, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's giving you this sense of like clarity with everything. Hundred percent. I got the clarity on day ten. Day ten. Day, day ten is the reason um, that I lasted till day twenty, and then once I hit day twenty, that's when I decided I was going for the long haul. So I plan on doing this at least to probably July. I feel like that'll be a little bit over a year. I probably have made a completely different shift, and I'll be a whole new person. Because you know, in the episode with Lee, we talked about crucifying our old self right and that's something i'm really dedicated to right now because you know the the previous version of brent was a great man and he was able to accomplish a lot but if that version was enough i would be at where we're talking about being at if that version of me was enough i would be 30 million up 40 million up. if that version of me was enough as good as he was I wouldn't still sitting here, be sitting here talking about things that I'm about to do. You know, they would have been done and my family would be in a better position than it is. So I have to take that previous version, who was excellent. I rock with bro, a lot, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just got to put them away and become the next level if I really want to get to the potential of who I'm supposed to be. So rest in peace to the old Brent, man. <laughs> Holla at you. Yeah, that's, that's very real, bro. Word, bro. Damn. Um, I know that you, I know that we, we're pretty much ready to wrap up, but I know that you did that, um, the project with the, the person from, uh, in LA. I think it was, it was a record executive. Mm, oh, yeah, Pop Tart Poppy. Shout out to Norway Denton. Um, we're sitting on so much content right now. <laughs> so the senior vice president um, of Warner is somebody that I grew up with and we had a I mean we've just had like a big brother little brother relationship and I've been shooting a lot of content for him and we even went to Chicago and came back one day um, I have like over an hour plus of edited footage for him that I chopped up into like five or six vlogs but it's really on him about how he wants to release it but I think I'm just gonna put it through decide to finish TV and um, just cultivate it on my side because he has a lot of he has a lot of other things going on it's not something that is a priority to him but i got this content bro and they gotta they gotta get out you know yeah, the people yeah. need it you know right and, and shout out to him he you know rolling with him shows me how a senior executive moves you know yeah. he has drivers in different cities he's he's constantly on the phone solving issues anywhere from the artist side of things to the management to the business side of things um just the demand that he has i was with him for 13 or 14 hours straight he was working the entire day like we flew from new york to chicago back to new york and he was working the whole time mind you we were having conversations throughout but he's basically on the phone solving some sort of issue on the phone with lawyers on the phone with artists you know 
and I, I thank him for trusting me with that because I heard a lot of things, you know, probably that I wasn't supposed to be privy to. <laughs> and, you know, he trusts me to be in that room and edit that, that information the right way. So shout out to Norway for that. That's what's up, bro. Yeah, I, I thought that was really inspirational to see because um, he has some really great interviews. Man, he's, he's an expert. He's been in a business 15, 20 years. I remember when we were working at Target, he was doing unpaid internships. Um, I even say it in one of the videos, I remember specifically, he was late to work one day. Mind you, we work at Target, bro. He's, he's late and they're like, yo, why was you late? He was like, yeah, I had to drive around Ludacris um, downtown and blah, blah, blah. And we was just like, whatever, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, push these carts, dog. Like, we gotta be in the electronics, you know? But oh, yeah, that stuff was for real. You know, and he, he's worked with all of the biggest artists, you know, and now he has that Rolodex of people that he could call on, like to get some of those Freddie Gibbs features. Like he knew Kelly Price on a first name basis. He could just call her up. Um, I would encourage people to check out the interview he just did with Cigar Talk. Shout out to Najee Chill. Okay. It's a lot of great information in that that just talks about his journey specifically. But yeah, we, we have some more stuff coming up just to answer your, your, your question. I'm, I mean, wild, long winded, bro. I gotta relax. Yeah, like. <laughs> The Story King, bro. Mm. Story King Tell with the, story. the pinky ring. <laughs> it goes with it. Um, Much love. This is good, bro. Appreciate you. Hey. I was solid. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I like this place. This place is fire. Smooth. Bro. The combo. I think it was, it was so important what you just said because one thing I said in regards to attending conferences and being part of these networks is I've attended a lot of these conferences in the past, but I think in order for us to level up and become the people I want to be, I no longer just want to attend these conferences. I want to be booked for them. I yeah. want to be the speaker. I want to, I, because I feel like I have, you know, from my experience on Wall Street to the entrepreneurship journey I'm on and the things I've done within music, I have a story to tell. And I believe that people should be privy to that and I should uh, explore platforms to, to share that story on, bro. So it's crazy that we were just talking about earlier how when you declare something to the world, the world is going to do their so best circle to circle back and, and say like, okay, you said you wanted that. Here's this opportunity. Here's this person that comes to get that. So salute to you, Chris. You know, this is all, this is all like the way God answers prayers, you know, so I just wanted to capture that. A chance to connect with me on a very special level, not Instagram, not social media, anything. I really want to give y'all my phone number. Y'all can text me directly at 708-578-7571. That's my number. It's really me, but it's only one thing. When you text that number, you can text your name, whatever you want to do. You have to make sure that you fill out the link. Fill out the link, and then when you text it, it's really going to be me. I'm going to be giving you special updates on special guests. For instance, when, I, when we had Snooki in the factory, the people that was on my text list, they knew about it first. I got somebody else coming real soon. I'm not going to put the name out, but if you join my VIP text list, you'll be in tune with everything before everybody else. So look, 708-578-7571. Text your name there. Make sure you fill out the link, and then you got full access to Story King Brand. Appreciate you. Tell the story. Tell the story.